We have had six weeks of solid rain. Not a lot of good laminating going on in those conditions. It's just absolute shit. And seriously, we've avoided floods at every stage, right at the north coast, just getting absolutely smashed. I cannot remember a time in my life that we've had rain like this. Um, it's just unfrigging believable. Right, today, this curve that runs all the way around the coach house roof, which actually intersects with my new hard top, needs to be trimmed. The flange on the outer side has to get a good trim. And the reason why is that that then has to be integrated into the existing coach house roof. And that's gonna be a bit of a challenge because it is, uh, it, it, although it has the curve, there's going to be quite a lot of bogging and filling required to get that in place. And I'll be bolting it through all the way round to make sure that I get a good fit in that section there. So this entire area needs to be fared into the deck itself and it'll take some integrating these parts together. The top combing of the hard top will also need a lot of detailed sanding to remove the unevenness caused by the plasticine as a radius tool. Any remnant parts of the temporary mould that we encounter will ultimately be polished out and removed to a perfect finish and I know just a person to do that job. <laughs> one in here, I should be able to pull it over the one centimetre I need to, and then I can decide on how I'm going to start to fare this in. I've literally spent days tabbing the rear cockpit and around the stairs and everything, basically down to the hull. It really is the deck glued down with tons of epoxy. Uh, I then have to put a fillet in of cotton flock and vinyl ester. Down here at the door here, you can actually see along here the white epoxy. Now that's around about half a centimetre thick and then obviously fillet it. And then what I'm actually doing is I'm putting in a vinyl ester fillet on top of that, which is bonding the hull and the deck together. And then ultimately tabbing from here to here to join the hull and the deck. I'm not just going to rely on a glue join. I know a lot of boats are held together with um, methacrylate and the like, but the, you know, this ultimately gives me three points of bonding to the deck, not just the actual glue and, and I'm pretty happy with that because the whole back of this boat is going to be flexing quite a bit and uh, and I don't want any flex and essentially this is forming yet another bulkhead in the structure of the boat and once this is tabbed in place basically I've then completed all the way round on both sides and I can then put in these bulkheads here which then tie this to the rest or the forward section of the uh, chamfer panel before we get up towards the galley and then into the midsection of the boat. So we're getting a lot of structure in here now and a lot of strength. I'm a firm believer in making every joint in this boat as neat as I can get it because there's nothing worse than sticking your hand behind some lining and uh, copping a sharp. And that there is now three layers of uh, 600 double bias holding the deck down with a cotton flock filler. And essentially, 
that'll have a lining board behind it and there will be some lines running through there not really sure what yet possibly my hydraulic steering or a fuel line crossover from one fuel tank to the other uh, I may do it around the stern because it's uh, it's nice and neat over the back there and be able to secrete it underneath the false floor underneath that lounge suite at the back there but um, this here does allow for some either electrical conduit or uh, for fuel line to be run back and forth. I'm going to peel ply that and then that will see the forward part of the cockpit completely tabbed, laminated and filleted. I've been putting off putting in this bulkhead down here. Uh, the one that intersects the coach house wall or the back wall with the hull. And the reason why I've been putting it off is because I've had all of this restorative work to do under here because of the helm station modification. Now I'm able to put this in. So I've put in some cleats here and I've prepared all the surface here. And this is going to basically sit into this area here and go right up into the wall there and complete the back wall of this boat. Now that will actually form a robe cabinet partitions for the other side into the rear or the stern cabin. But I'm gonna basically nestle this into a fillet of vinyl ester and cotton flock. And then I'll tab it to the hull around these cleats. These cleats are here to hold it in place. And then I'll basically uh, get it all tabbed in and then I'll remove the cleats once it's set and finish the work indeed. But that will level up this wall and complete the entire section. And that'll give me the ability then to go on with all the work underneath and complete the, uh, the helm station modification and the reinforcement. So all of the tabbing of the actual staircase that I've put in for the helm is, in, is totally complete now. Uh, it is all reinforced and completely tabbed in place. So it is now structural. Uh, the only thing I need to do is put in a couple of foam rafters in here or some supports underneath. I'm just not convinced that this is enough, even though there's multiple layers of glass here containing this whole thing here with two people standing here and a bit of a rough seaway we could get a little bit of wear and tear here and although it's foam we want to make sure that it is nice and solid um, the actual integration of this bulkhead here in a moment is going to complete this section and then i'll be able to put in the partition wall that's required here uh, and then i'll have to tab it from the inside of the hatch that is basically going to be put in here. So what I'll do is I'll do all this work, be able to access this now, and then this simple wall that's going in here will have to be completed from the other side. It's important you don't slide it into place. You need to almost drop it into place. Um, try to avoid sliding it at all costs because if I slide it, I'll lose all my stuff. to go and then let it find its home right there so what I need to do now is I need to secure it at the right height as you can see it's sort of roughly in place but I will be going back and backfilling because underneath all of these foam intersections I leave five millimeters of of room and that allows for minimizing the shear point and then the tabbing does all the work the tabbing engages into the fillet but for now I'm going to just basically screw that up in place with those two cleats and then I'll backfill underneath to make sure that my fillets are complete and that the tabbing will then take over with the strength now obviously it's very important not to glass in your bracket there because that's screwed in place. So I'll tab either side of this and then remove it and then patch over the top of it. 
like that is really holding it in place. So I'm going to grab some of tab. Each side. Like so, ever expanding my tabs as I come out. Obviously, that's that's sound good technique, and uh, and really the only way to do it. All right, so I've certainly got that in place. That's uh, that's gone off. I just peeled the peel ply off that tab there because I'm going to have to repair in between where these cleats are that I've put in. I'm going to remove these supports and then I can get on with um, dealing with this gap here. Now that's going to be filled with vinyl ester and cotton flock and that'll tie that back into the wall. I'm going to try and get that level. Right, so I used up the excess vinyl ester that I had just to start filling this area here but it certainly wasn't enough. So what I'll do now is I'll fill this and uh, and then I'll be tabbing from here to here to make sure that this wall is all one piece. Had a pretty massive session over the last couple of days. I've got the bulkheads in, and you'll see here I've left a, a small depression here where I've actually filled in between the chamfer on this bulkhead and the chamfer on this one, and I've just laminated it and tied it back. It's a smooth as, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. It was a jigsaw puzzle, and in fact, there was two pieces that had to go in separately and independently, and then all be glassed together, but it's actually come up really nice. So what will happen now is I'll be able to work on these cupboards here and these um, robes that are going to be part of this back module. That will start to get tied in with some more foam core panels and uh, and ultimately build the strength back in. But yeah, that's really nice. It's taken me a good two days to get that totally complete. I'll just show you down in the back cabin. It is going to get pretty dark. I'm struggling with the LED lights that I have here. These work lights are terrible for a flicker. But if you come into the actual cabin, you can see now underneath here, this is the helm stairs. And then this bulkhead has been totally tied in, filleted and tabbed to the hull. So it's structural and it's actually going to add a lot of strength to this back part because the back part of the boat, other than the moulding itself, for the walk through transom doesn't have a lot of strength and then obviously we're engaging in the uh, in the engine room bulkheads as well as we go through so we start to get a lot of strength as we go further back but not so much in this area here it is a big void so you can see here i've got quite a cavity down in here and this is going to be an area where i intend to put a hot water system um, because it's adjacent to the engine room or the stern cabin and also very close to my water um, to my pumps which are actually down in this road down the bottom here so I've got to consider how I'm going to pipe all this through and I do have quite a lot of scope with regard to plumbing in the works I also have some conduits that need to go through the bottom here what I intend to do is mount this bulkhead and then hole saw there and then put the conduits through this way uh, aligning with the ones on the other side and then from the stern cabin this is what this bulkhead looks like. So this has to be tabbed to the actual deck, to the hull, and then right up into here. So I'm going to be using a little bit of fill and, uh, and some good tabbing to hold all this together. It doesn't need to actually intersect up here, but it certainly does down here. It will, in fact, interface with that bulkhead quite neatly, and then I can move forward.
Okay, this is the last time we're going to see this open. Um, this area here was absolutely invaluable for the lifting and the lowering of the deck. And now I'm about to close it off forever. There's no chance of this deck ever being lifted again unless someone wants to cut it in half. And uh, that bulkhead is going in there right now. That guy is now in uh, both sides, I've tabbed it. What I'll do is I'll let it sit for a couple of hours and then I'll come in and I'm gonna deal with this section here. It's very important, this has a structural fiber put in here as well as multiple layers of tabbing to join it to the deck itself. And we'll just have a look down the back here. And I've been going pretty hard, jammed up in this little hole here, but that is now all tabbed in. And once that's set, I'll come back and remove the cleats, and then I can basically get on with just tidying up the tabbing just there and there and finishing it. And then I can come back tomorrow and get all the underside done here, and this section will also be finished. It's taken quite a bit of fill. I'm using cotton flock and vinyl ester. It's a classic glue thickener, which gives quite a bit of structure. It's actually not like just adding, um, you know, powder to your vinyl ester. And the, the key to it is you're actually getting a binding agent and also a structural element to your filler. Now, because I do have a chamfer on this foam panel here and another one here, I ha I'm always going to have a gap here. So I was able to, on the other side, minimize it down to almost nothing. And you can see here where I've glassed the back so that's now solid that means I can now fill this and end up with a little indentation rather than a massive dent here and that's a key to, to tying in this structure to this structure this one here isn't actually structural this is this one here is structural so this is actually joining the deck and the hull together around the back of the coach house here so plenty of fill going in here uh, another probably another good bag of, of vinyl ester and cotton flock and then I'll do my tabbing over the top I've already tabbed down into the recesses of that road down there remembering this is actually the back of our galley and, uh, and it's going to basically form a, uh, a solid wall into the bedroom and the nice thing about a gap filling like this is you're minimizing noise transferring back to the cabin as well uh, particularly if people are in the kitchen here we don't want too much noise going back into there